Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am 26 weeks and 4 days pregnant and I'm going to give you guys some stats on baby and mommy at the 26 week mark. Almost 27 weeks which will put us in our third trimester and also go over some new symptoms that I've been experiencing this week and of course some old symptoms that have carried on over through this week. So let's jump right in. Baby's immune system is still piggybacking off of mine as it gears up for birth and the baby's putting on a lot of fat right now to keep the baby cozy and warm as he or she starts regulating their own temperature. Right now it says I could be experiencing contractions which would be preparing my uterus and my body to give birth which we've already talked about that I'm definitely feeling a lot of contractions. And then it also says vaginal discharge and leaky breasts can also occur, which some of those I have been having some symptoms of, so we'll talk about that later in the video, which is really why I like these apps because so far it seems like they've been right on the money with what I've been experiencing and the symptoms I've been having. It says baby is spending a lot of time packing on the fat that will help him or her regulate their body temperature. The baby's eyes, which have been sealed this entire time for months now, are finally starting to open so that's exciting and he or she will be more responsive to light and will kick up a storm when they detect some light the baby's vision is yet another reason to make sure you're gaining weight at your rate your healthcare professional suggests as low birth weight has been linked with infant vision problems okay so we want to make sure we're gaining enough weight the baby is also gearing up his or her immune system for birth and borrowing some of my antibodies one theory about the development of the baby's immune system is that because of this share and share alike attitude the immune system after birth will be best suited to the environments you're adapted to this means that the baby could be adapted to live best in your home that's cool. Well, most of baby's bodily symptoms and functions are now intact and most of the rest of his or her development purely revolves around putting on weight and height. The baby is now over 14 inches tall and weighs close to two pounds. The baby is the size of a butternut squash. At 26 weeks, your baby has started to inhale and exhale small amounts of amniotic fluid, which is essential for his or her developing lungs. Our baby is now able to hear our voices outside of the womb. So that's really cool. So now would be the time to start talking to the baby, reading to the baby, listening to music, because now the baby can hear all of that. I probably should start having Marley start talking to the baby as well or maybe reading some stories to the baby. I think that would be really cute and beneficial for both of them. Okay, so it looks like baby is getting bigger, growing, pretty much has already developed everything that all of their organs and everything that they're going to be developing and now at this point they're just growing getting bigger putting on fat and they're able to open their eyes and hear so the baby is starting to look more and more like a newborn gearing up and getting ready for their birthday so now let's talk about mommy and how our body is doing at 26 weeks so at week 26 we're drawing close to the end of our second trimester and we're gearing up to enter our third trimester our final trimester of our pregnancy and in the third trimester we can expect to gain about 11 more pounds so we want to make sure that we're eating as healthy as possible drinking a lot of water and preparing ourselves for that additional weight gain that is inevitable my app says that restless leg syndrome is something that many women tend to experience in their third trimester lucky me i have already been experiencing it for a few months now okay it also says that you may want to try using compression stockings those help reduce swelling 
and then you'll also start to experience more difficulty sleeping as a result of hormones and the physical obstruction that your growing womb can present and I definitely have been experiencing restless nights for many reasons. Those Braxton Hicks contractions are going to continue as you move closer to delivery day. They can be frustrating, but they're an important step as your body gears up for delivery. As your delivery day grows closer, they may begin to mimic true labor more and more. But this is false labor and is different from the way true labor does, often has irregular contractions and can change or end if you shift your position, which yes, that is true. I've definitely noticed that if I move, I can feel the contraction letting up and not stay so intense. If you aren't sure though, it's still better to be safe than sorry. Getting taken in by false labor is nothing to be embarrassed about. It just means you've got baby's best interest and mind. So our body at 26 weeks does go through quite a bit of changes as we prepare ourselves for delivery. Our contractions are going to get a little bit more frequent and it's going to be more difficult to sleep at night as our bellies grow bigger and bigger but that's all really good news as the baby is growing really healthy and we're just preparing for that big day so now let's move on and talk about my symptoms at 26 weeks so the first symptom i want to talk about is lack of sleep i cannot remember the last time i got a good night's sleep i just don't sleep very well there's so many factors that go into that that I'm still having issues with, like my restless leg syndrome is causing me to stay up at night. I'm still having to wake up to use the bathroom every night. Even if I'm not chugging a bottle of water before I go to bed, let's say I don't have one for an hour or two before I go to bed, I still wake up. I get hot and then I get cold and then just my belly in general makes it very difficult for me to sleep. Um, if I'm sleeping on either side, it kind of can hurt and I know I've talked about this multiple times but I am only comfortable on my back and I try really hard not to sleep on my back because I know that it's not good for my body and my organs to sleep on my back but it really is the only way that I can get comfortable. So I'll wake up on my back and then I'll move over to my side and then I struggle to fall back asleep. So sleeping right now is just not fun for me, but I believe this happens for a reason. I truly believe that we have a hard time sleeping when we're pregnant because our bodies are trying to gear us for all the sleepless nights that we're going to experience in the very near future when that baby is here. I am not looking forward to that. I do remember those days after having Marley and you just feel like a zombie because you literally get zero sleep. So I think your body's just preparing you for that. So if that's the case, I guess I'll just live with it and try to take more naps during the day when I can. So the second symptom that I want to talk about is a stuffy nose. I've been dealing with a stuffy nose for Ugh, I don't even know how long. It's been a while. I've just been living with it. I didn't really pay it much mind until here recently and it's just become quite a nuisance for me. I'm constantly sniffling or blowing my nose. I'm not sick. I did do a little bit of research and whattoexpect.com says high levels of the pregnancy hormones estrogen and progesterone increases blood flow to all of your body's mucous membranes including the nose plus your allergies may be kicking in the result your nose probably already knows the mucous membrane swell and soften leading to a stuffy nose so it's nothing for me to worry about but it is just more of a nuisance and I'm constantly sniffling sneezing or blowing my nose and it very well could be allergies but it's not going away so maybe I will talk to my doctor about that. I do have a doctor's appointment next Monday and see if there's anything that I can take to get rid of it or if I should just deal with it until it just finally goes away. My Braxton Hicks are still happening every day, pretty much a few times a day. They're still kind of more intense at night or I notice them more at night and Sometimes they can be really, really intense, sometimes not. Nothing too intense though to where I think I'm going into labor or anything, but it just, my belly gets really, really hard and constricted for just a few seconds and then it'll let loose. 
Um, so it's more of a nuisance than anything else, but I'm still dealing with them every single day. My appetite has definitely increased a little bit. I've noticed it over the last couple of weeks for sure. It may have something to do with the holidays. I don't know. Probably does. I think it'll go away soon once I venture into my third trimester and there's not going to be a lot of room for all of this extra food. So yeah, I've been a lot hungrier recently and grabbing for a lot of treats that I shouldn't be. So over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be trying to get back on track. We're done with the holidays new year and just continue to eat as healthy as I can. So another symptom is I'm still running out of breath. It's hard for me to breathe. I get out of breath really easily if I'm walking around or running around. I feel like I have to like take deep breaths sometimes. It's hard for me to bend over. I have to now take a seat to put on my shoes or my socks still. That's going to continue throughout the rest of my pregnancy, I'm sure. My gums have been bleeding quite a bit when I brush my teeth or I floss, which that pretty much has been going on my entire pregnancy. I do feel like it's gotten maybe a tad bit worse recently, but that's definitely been a symptom since I've been pregnant. So let's talk about the symptoms that nobody wants to talk about, the symptoms that makes us a little uncomfortable or a little embarrassed. So fair warning, TMI, if you get grossed out easily and don't want to listen to things that might make your stomach queasy, then go ahead and click out of this video right now. So every woman knows what vaginal discharge is. It's not anything new. It doesn't only happen when you're pregnant. It happens many times throughout your cycle, but we're all fully aware of it. Now, when you become pregnant, you will have different vaginal discharge. You will have some starting as soon as you get pregnant and you will have it all the way through the end of your pregnancy. So discharge is completely normal. And in fact, it is, it is healthy to have during your pregnancy. Increased hormones and vaginal blood flow cause the discharge. It increases during pregnancy to prevent infections as your cervix and vaginal walls soften. So if you're experiencing vaginal discharge, it's nothing to worry about. It's your body's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. So during this pregnancy, I've also experienced some gas. It hasn't been a symptom of here recently. I did experience some gas during my first trimester the most I believe. I do feel like it was pretty frequent during the first several weeks. It has trickled down and kind of veered off and I'm not really experiencing that currently. It could come back. It really just kind of comes and goes. It's not super consistent for me at least but it is a typical sign of pregnancy and is nothing to be concerned about. And all of this is caused by slower moving intestine muscles, which then in turn lead your digestion to slow down as well, causing bloating, burping, and gas. So again, nothing to be concerned about. It's completely normal. It happens to all of us and it's just, it comes with the territory. So the last TMI symptom that I wanna to talk to you guys about is bowel movements and constipation. So many, many women during their pregnancy experience constipation, and it's the exact same reason why women experience bloating and gas. It's because your, your hormones and it slows down your digestion, which causes you to be constipated. So that's one symptom that I actually have not experienced, at least not yet, but I believe it's because of the Diet that I choose to eat and also the amount of water that I drink. I drink a ton of water um, and I do try to eat pretty healthy for the most part so that really helps with your digestion and I have noticed since eating healthier over the last several years it's helped with my digestion. Uh, prior to getting pregnant with Marley I had horrible constipation just normally not pregnant and then when I got pregnant with Marley, it kind of made things digest better. So it kind of worked the opposite for me with Marley. And then it just, since I've been eating healthier and drinking a lot of water, I really haven't had to experience that. So if you are having that problem, maybe increase your water and try to add a few healthier meals, some fruits and vegetables into your diet. It might help you kind of speed up your digestion and get rid of some of that constipation. Or also definitely speak to your doctor because I am not a doctor. These are just my own personal suggestions um, that have worked for 
for me but yeah definitely speak to your doctor but drinking more water and eating fruits and vegetables definitely couldn't hurt so I recommend trying that so another symptom that I would say is new that I'm experiencing but if you asked my husband he'd probably be like no, this has been happening the whole time, um, is I feel like I'm really, really emotional. There have been so many things that have just set me off where I get really emotional, I get really upset. I've been getting flustered and frustrated very easily and I know it's because of my hormones, but for still some reason, I can't deal. Like I just get so worked up and so emotional. So I'm trying to deal with that and keep that down to a minimum or like go to a different room or something if I'm having a moment. But I definitely have noticed myself getting a little emotional at times to where I just burst into tears for no reason and get upset. But then it's like after I have my moment and I cry, I'm good and I can move on with my day. So I guess it's really not that bad. <laughs> Another symptom that's kind of funny is I laugh a lot more since I've been pregnant. I can tell like things have, cr things just crack me up especially when I'm around my sister, but just in general, I laugh at everything these days. Things just are so funny to me. And I mean, I have a pretty good sense of humor, not pregnant, but things are just over the top funny to me to where I'm crying and I can't breathe because I'm laughing so hard. So that symptom I really have been enjoying. I hope it stays for a while because I like to laugh. The last symptom that I want to share with you guys is still my acid reflux. I've still been experiencing acid reflux pretty frequently, um, especially later at night. If I'm laying down, I feel like it comes up really easily. You know, it's still happening. I, I'm going to talk to my doctor about it to see if, there, if I can take Tums or something else that will help it. But, I mean, it's not really that big of a deal. Again, it's just a nuisance. But it has been happening for the last several weeks. And it is so bad and so frequent that I do throw up in my mouth from time to time. And of course, I'd rather not do that. So hopefully my doctor has some good suggestions on that and I will share them with you guys. All right, before I go, let me go ahead and give you guys a bump shot at 26 weeks. All right, guys, well, that's it for me. That was my 26 week update. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I enjoyed making it for you. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And if you are new here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you can see more videos like this. Let me know what embarrassing symptoms you're experiencing right now during your pregnancy or what videos you guys would like to see me do next. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.